Hey, good morning, everybody. It's uh, Friday, October 30th, and uh, tomorrow is Halloween. So you've probably been eating candy all week and uh, making sure it's good to go. You got to test stuff before you hand it out. Be weird, hey, to see who comes around this year. Um, uh, we're doing, of course, our trunk or treat, which I'll talk about in a little bit. But um, uh, it's going to be a great time. It looks like we're going to have some warm weather. So that's fantastic. Uh, I want to talk today a little bit about mentorship. Recently, I got to spend time with uh, one of my key mentors, uh, Brent Trask. We hung out at uh, just this beautiful cottage of a friend of ours, a mutual friend of ours, out in Glenifer Lake. Gorgeous, huge, beautiful cottage over right on the lake. So that was really fun. We uh, laughed together. They got these donuts from a place right near. Some of you guys know about this donut place. I can't remember what it was called, but the donuts were just incredible. And uh, so I had one of those that were very, very good. Uh, we talked about ministry stuff. Uh, we watched some YouTube videos. We prayed together. We, we uh, went for dinner. <clears throat> it was just, uh, it was a great, great time to be together with him. And uh, he's so good at, uh, you know, probing kind of what's going on in my heart and uh, help me to, to see where I'm at and to see what's going really well and to, and to see where I can improve. At one point I asked him, I said, um, what was he receiving from Jesus that was help keeping him going these days? What was, what was Jesus giving to him that's helping him wake up with a smile on his face and a jump in his step? Man, that was a, I loved hearing his answer. We're with a couple other guys too who uh, I look up to and uh, it was great to hear from them, to hear what, uh, what they had to say. Um, I have other mentors in my life as well, people that I uh, turn to, Lorne Fredlin, some of you know Lorne, you remember him, and uh, he's a guy that's been a real good encouragement to me. Also, there's, there's people here in the church that are mentoring me, and uh, so mentor is a great thing. So maybe your question is, what's so great about a mentor? Why are mentors so fantastic? I think there's a whole bunch of things, but uh, I just jotted down a few of them. One of them is that uh, they listen actively to to what you're saying. Uh, you need someone to pro to listen to you while you process what you're thinking, uh, just to take it in. Sometimes it's good just to have someone just just listen and as you talk it out, uh, you you make uh, you make your own some self corrections as you hear what you're saying and and you think, man, that didn't sound right. So it's really good to have a mentor who listens actively. Uh, mentors can ask good questions. I remember when Jennifer and I were uh, we were seeking a mentor during the days when we were we were just lost. We didn't know where we were going or what we were doing, and uh, uh, it was during the time of being off work. And this mentor just asked really good questions. I kind of wanted him just to tell me what to do. That's what I was going to him for. You know, just give me just give me the directions and I'll do it. Um, instead, he asked questions. One of the questions he asked was, uh, with all this you know, job loss and health loss and all that. Uh, do you feel closer to God or farther away from God? Oh, that's a really good question. It wasn't the question I was looking looking to have answered, but because he asked it to me, I, I thought about it. I thought, well, I feel closer to God than I've ever felt before. I feel more of God's love. I feel, um, uh, yeah, I feel like my love for him is greater. And he just then helped me to see that maybe this there's something really beautiful about this season of darkness in your life. So those are great questions, and we need mentors to ask good questions. Another thing that mentors do is they encourage us to step out of our comfort zone. Man, it's easy to just stay in, what we, in the place where we feel safest. Sometimes we need to be pushed into the unknown in order to grow and to learn and to change. And uh, often we won't do that on our own. We need someone else to say, what if you tried this? Uh, a mentor that we trust, that knows us, and that can see our potential that we can't see. It's really great. They know how to provide constructive feedback, uh, you know, that we, someone that we trust, that we can listen to, and, uh, and they're farther down the road than we are. Often that's what happens. We're usually mentors are someone older than us, so they've just experienced more of life and maybe some lessons they learned the hard way, they can help you learn the easier way. Uh, it's just great to be able to, to get input from people like that. So um, I'm big into mentorship, I'm, and uh, there's people that I'm mentoring. I want to use whatever God has given me to help them grow and to become more mature and more gifted in who they are. You know, the Apostle Paul was big on mentorship, too. He had people with him. Timothy, of course, was one. Uh, Paphras was another. Titus was another. Uh, Paul was, uh, he was always encouraging and coaching these young bucks to help them be the best that they could be. And... Um, you know, he would, uh, he'd bring him along. I'm just learning uh, the book of Galatians right now. And Paul says, uh, after 14 years, then after 14 years, I went up again to Jerusalem. 
uh, this time with Barnabas. So there's his kind of partner in ministry. And then he adds, I took Titus along also. It's like, Titus, you got to come check out what Barnabas and I are doing. And just pay attention. There's lots you can learn. So Paul is investing into the young, young people. They're the future of uh, ministry. I'm, I'm almost 55. You know, I'm not going to be around forever. And so it's really good for me to invest in someone who's, who's in their 20s and in their 30s and uh, give them whatever I can, whatever I can learn so that they can, they can grow. So who is mentoring you these days? Do you have a mentor in your life? And who are you mentoring? Uh, these are really good questions to ask. Don't be afraid of them. They're really, really good. Uh, we have the opportunity uh, to lean as a church to be mentors, to lean into the future liter- leadership of Christian ministry through a program uh, uh, called internship. So internship is uh, where a student from uh, a university or college, Bible college, comes and is a part of our church uh, listening and learning and, and participating and being evaluated. And um, uh, I believe this is a great opportunity. I was approached by our Alliance Bible School, Ambrose University, and they said they've got someone and uh, wanted to know if we would be a mentor coach to that student here. I presented to the board, and after lots of good prayerful discussion, uh, they sort of agreed the same way. Our chairman of the board was saying that, man, we got to do this. Uh, we've got to invest in the, in, in the future of our church, uh, the church uh, globally, not just, uh, not just the church here in Sylvan Lake, but the church around the world and here in Canada. And so, um, so they uh, thought this was a great idea. Then I presented it to the staff because that's who's going to be affected by this, right? They are the ones that the uh, intern will be kind of shadowing and um, being with. And, and they were excited about it too. They thought it'd be a great opportunity to show how we do ministry in our context. Now, but I want to give you the opportunity to be involved in this process as well. Now, it's possible for us to do this with, for very little cost to the church. If one or two people would be willing to open their home for two or four months uh, for this intern. Uh, the intern is a single Filipino woman in her early 30s. Uh, she's, uh, she had spent some time in pre-law, going into the field of law, before God called her into full-time ministry. And uh, she just obeyed and left the, that future plan of being a lawyer to um, follow after Jesus in, in full-time ministry in the church. And um, she uh, loves God's word. She loves teaching but she's also open and willing to be a part of any ministry opportunity we can give her. And so um, having her in your home would not only be a blessing to her, but I believe it'd be a great blessing to you. Uh, You could be inspired by her faith, her uh, her delight in Jesus, her longing to follow after him. Uh, You um, would have a sense of partnering with Jesus uh, to see help develop the future of Christian leadership uh, in a small way going forward. And um, you would uh, uh, join in the gift of hospitality, experiencing and participating in hospitality. And I know some of you are just fantastic at this. I know some of you have room in your home. And I would just encourage you to think about this. If you are interested, please let me know. And uh, we can um, get you a chance to Zoom call to meet her ahead of time and all that kind of stuff. But that would be just so fantastic. It would be a huge help. Um, yeah, so let me know. All right, well, we've got a big few days coming up in the next little while. Uh, tomorrow is Halloween, and like I said earlier, we're doing our Trunk or Treat event, and that's going to be from 1 to 3 here at the church. Uh, so just be praying for that for us. We're going to be handing out candy. We're also going to be handing out uh, this really cool uh, crafty piece that, um, that explains the gospel uh, really well, explains the love of Jesus to people, and an invite for people to come back to church. So, um, yeah, just pray that people would, would come. It'd be really fun and that, um, uh, uh, that, that uh, it would speak to them spiritually as well and that maybe they would come back the next day. Uh, and the next day is uh, Michael is preaching and we're talking about how we get to heaven. And this is, boy, this burns in Michael's heart in so many ways. And so I'm uh, really looking forward to hearing him bring the message on Sunday and uh, this would be a great opportunity for you to invite someone to come to church, invite a neighbor or a friend, a family member who doesn't know Jesus, invite them to come. It's going to be a fantastic, um, 
uh, ser service. And then at uh, 10, 15 on Sundays, we're having these baptism conversations. And if you're interested in baptism, boy, I'd love it if you could come up for this conversation. Verna is going to be leading it. Um, you know, we, we set up uh, some baptism times for next weekend, November 7th and 8th, and uh, they're already filled. So this is exciting. Uh, God is on the move and people are hungry and responding to him. If you want to be baptized, it's not too late. We will book more times and uh, we will find a way to get people baptized. I believe this is what God wants us to do. And uh, don't don't wait around. If you're if you have any kind of tinge to be baptized, particularly if um, uh, if you have any sense, you know, that uh, God's calling you to this, then please let me know. Uh, someone asked me once, they said, you know, how, how do I know if I should be baptized? Uh, I'm waiting for God to tell me to be baptized. And I said, why don't you ask God if you shouldn't be, why you shouldn't be baptized? Uh, the default is that we would be baptized. People believed in Christ and they were baptized. And um, so if you're a believer and you haven't been baptized, you need to ask yourself, why? Why am I not baptized? Why have I not uh, publicly declared that I'm going to be a follower of Jesus? Well, what's going on with that? That's a great question to ask. So, uh, and if you want to ask that tomorrow or get some more information on that, come at 10.15 tomorrow. And then lastly, on Tuesday, I'm going to uh, quote the book of Revelation Tuesday evening. Here's, um, well, you can look at it. Here's the, here's the script. And uh, I'm just uh, rehearsing it and going over it again. Uh, it is so beautiful. Uh, let me give you a little taste of it, okay? So John says this. On the Lord's day, I was in the Spirit, and I heard behind me a loud voice like a trumpet, which said, Write on a scroll what you see and send it to the seven churches, to Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. I turned around to see the voice that was speaking to me. When I turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. And among the lampstands was one like a son of man, dressed in a robe reaching down to his feet with a golden sash across his chest. His head and hair were white like wool, and his eyes were like blazing fire. His feet were like bronze glowing in the furnace, and his voice was like the sound of rushing waters. In his right hand he held seven stars, and out of his mouth came a sharp double-edged sword. His face was like the sun, shining in all its brilliance. When I saw him, I fell at his feet as though dead. Then he placed his right hand on me and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead and behold, I am alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys of death and Hades. Write there for what you have seen, what is now, and what will take place later. The mystery of the seven stars you saw in my right hand and of the seven golden lampstands is this. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. And the seven lampstands are the seven churches. All right. So that's just a little bit in chapter one. And uh, man, it just, it is a fantastic book. So if you've never heard the book of Revelation um, or you haven't read it because you're nervous of it or it just seems too weird or whatever, ah oh man, come on out, just hear it. It says actually right at the very beginning, blessed is the one who reads the words of this prophecy and blessed are those who hear it and take to heart what is written in it for the time is near. So join me on Tuesday night uh, uh, at 7 p.m. here at the church. All right, guys. Well, I hope you have a fantastic weekend. Uh, don't eat too much candy, and we'll talk to you on Sunday. <music>